Every day, over 30 tons of human hair are thrown out by salons. And that's just in the United States and Canada alone. For reference, that is about 22 million pounds of hair, or about the weight of 7,000 elephants, or 50 statues of liberty, tossed out every day. Some innovative companies are viewing this waste as an opportunity to capitalize on a valuable resource by turning human hair into a sustainable alternative to traditional textiles. From versatile fabrics and mats to high-performing outdoor jackets and sleeping bags that will rival wool, down, and other synthetic materials. As the world aims to be more sustainable, what is the role of human hair as a resource? How does it perform compared to other materials? And how would you feel about using gear and wearing clothing made from another human's hair? It's really just another animal fiber. It performs extremely well. If you've ever gone a few days without washing your hair, you've noticed how oily it can get. This natural ability to absorb oil while repelling water has made human hair an extremely effective material for mats used in cleaning up oil spills and polluted bodies of water. Hair is packed into booms and mats to soak up and filter out the oil. It can go into so many different applications. I think that's also what is really exciting that there are so many possibilities to utilize certain waste streams that we forgot about. In addition to outdoor videos like this, Greenbelly makes big meal bars packed with 650 calories and protein, fat, fiber, and carbs for big outdoor adventures. Greenbelly meals have been called Rice Krispie Treats on steroids and come in five flavors using all natural ingredients. Greenbelly meals, and these are these really delicious uh, bars. Greenbelly. Greenbelly. Greenbelly meals. Greenbelly. If you have an outdoor adventure coming up, check us out at greenbelly.com. Human hair has been used for things like brooms, wigs, ropes, and finely crafted paintbrushes, dating back to over 2,000 years ago in China. Its strength, elasticity, and abundance makes it ideal for everyday items that need to withstand heavy use. Human hair's potential in performance clothing goes back to one of its main evolutionary purposes, insulating our bodies. Just like other natural insulating materials like down feathers from duck and geese, or wool from sheep, Hair has a natural ability to trap air and provide thermal insulation, which makes it ideal for extreme and rugged outdoor conditions, and why it's being explored as a more sustainable insulation alternative for outdoor gear items like sleeping bags and puffy winter jackets. The thought of wearing human hair probably sounds odd. Having a fabric made from the hair of hundreds of people wrapped around your body. However, it's actually considered a very clean and hygienic process. The collection process usually starts in salons. Companies like Matter of Trust, Green Circle Salons, and Human Material Loop partner with them to collect large batches of hair, typically around 50 pounds each. The hair then goes under a washing and cleaning process to turn it into a product that is suitable and safe for use. The clean hair is then sorted and labeled, with detailed records of its origin. Using a type of eco-friendly chemistry, the hair fibers are processed and refined into a new material that once was human hair and resembles wool. It is now ready to be spun into yarn, fabric, or even fillers to be used as insulation. However, getting hair to be taken seriously as a technical outdoor material is another challenge. Outdoor gear is particularly known for needing to be high performing. That means durable, lightweight, and warm and human hair had not really been tested. Last January, Leonardo, one of our teammates, climbed the Argentina's highest mountain, almost 7,000 meter high, minus 40 degrees, in a jacket and pants that were filled with our material that we are developing to replace down and feathers in, in outdoor gear. Argentina's highest mountain is Aconcagua, which stands at 22,800 feet high, making it not only the tallest mountain in Argentina, but the tallest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. It was like, Sofia, I never had such a good jacket. I was not sweating, I was kept warm, I dried very quick. Successful field tests like this are building confidence in brands and consumers that using human hair as insulation is not just an innovative idea. It's a practical, high-performance alternative to traditional materials. Despite the hype though, other than anecdotal testimonies like this, it has not been tested extensively outdoors. What we do have are studies on human hair and our understanding of its composition. 
and therefore, we can compare that to other known fabrics with a similar composition that have been tested. Notably, wool. It's really just another animal fiber. It's very much wool. So it can give all the all the perks as, as a wool sweater or a wool gear would give to you. Both human hair and wool are composed of 95% keratin. This strong similarity makes them an obvious comparison. Keratin is a tough, fibrous protein that forms the foundation of hair and nails. With a tensile strength around 200 megapascals, which is similar to a low-grade steel, but lightweight, more flexible, and elastic, able to be stretched up to one and a half its original length. Wool's performance, and now by association with human hair, has been well documented and compared to other materials. If you have to compare for thermal properties or weight perspective, it performs extremely well compared to, for example, the synthetic fibers. Down insulation has some of the highest warmth to weight ratios, meaning it's very light, but down loses its insulating properties when wet. On the contrary, wool and human hair retain 60 to 80% of their insulation ability when wet and are naturally breathable and moisture wicking. Wool and hair are uniquely antimicrobial, meaning that they have the ability to resist and inhibit the growth of microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Hair specifically is also long lasting, meaning it doesn't degrade or oxidize in aerial environments. Some of the oldest hair ever found dates back 200,000 years. Imagine that sweater or that gear could last 9,000 years. It's extremely long-lasting materials. Despite the performance similarities, wool and human hair can differ in a big way. Price. With roughly 8 billion people on the planet, human hair is already being produced in extremely high volumes, for free. Collecting otherwise wasted hair from the salon floor is substantially less expensive than the cost to raise and maintain resource-intensive livestock. This efficiency would mean lower retail prices for human hair goods like clothing, jackets, and sleeping bags. Human hair would also reduce the environmental impact from animal-based products like wool or down, or from other high-resource-intensive products like cotton. It's a byproduct from our lifestyle. It's not something that takes the land, holds the water, uses a lot of chemicals. Producing one pound of sheep's wool requires an estimated 400 gallons of water, and one sheep emits around 66 pounds of methane annually. In Australia alone, wool farming occupies about 13% of the country's agricultural land. Just for comparison for wool, uh, one of the most common processes for wool production, you need to go through 27 steps of cleaning before you start working with the material because it is so dirty and there is so much feces, the dirt from the fields, blood from the animals. Brands utilizing human hair in their gear have a unique battle to win over the mind of consumers. Imagine your next running shoe from a material that has no toxic chemicals, no microplastics, and 100% natural. Some of us feel uneasy about using human hair in everyday products. Hair can be such a personal part of who we are. But human hair might be one of our greatest underutilized natural resources. It performs extremely well, it's affordable to produce, and has minimal environment impact. And who knows what other hair uses we might find. Maybe while it is always very shocking for people to realize that our source of materialism was at some point somebody's head. To have a healthier and, and more sustainable textile industry, we really have to embrace these changes and really be open for new ideas, for new ways of living and thinking. What do you think? Would you wear a jacket made from other people's hair? Let us know in the comments. We're a small team that loves the outdoors. If you like this, we'd love for you to like and subscribe to the channel. Big thanks to Zofia Cooler, founder of Human Material Loop, for their help making this video.